Praise God. Praise Almighty Jesus. Just to Christ, logo. Uh, we are again welcoming you with pleasure to another session of uh, Happy Home Sunday Family Forum. In what is that? Because Sunday tea where God has been helping us to deliver superior healing messages to our marriages. I want to pray that as you listen to this question today, there will be a renewal in your heart that will cross great manifestation of God's visitation in your home. In Jesus' name. I will quickly go to the question, the first question today. It, it has to do with uh, parenting. You, know, you are aware that uh, the happy home is not all about just uh, the husband and the husband uh, the, and the wife uh, segment of the family. It deals with all members of the family. Let's see more. We pay it did a lay out Tamashini Oshushi and the question goes out you and you is it goes like this. It's very not lobby. Now um It says, is it right for the friend of a married man to poke nose in a family home? home? My husband's friend reported to my husband that our children that the children are roaming about the street and he cannot flog them my husband now called me that I should stop going to work and take care of the children at home of course, I refused. I confronted my husband's friend on why he reported me to my husband while his wife is the one I am keeping the children with. Since that, since that, the character of my husband's friend changed and he is an assistant pastor in one of the Pentecostal churches. Please, I want you to throw more light on this situation okay. because my husband said, I want to separate him and his friend, which is not the case. Now, you are, my sister, you are neither, you know, fear, nor realistic with your, you know, comment in this aspect. Surely you have only, you know, told a part of the story. You are, you know, uh, close enough to drop your children with your family friend, yet you don't want them to advise you on their welfare, on the welfare of these children. The family, whether you believe it or not, this is your friend's family, whether you believe it or not, are the custodian of your children who you apparently have no sufficient time for, perhaps because both of you have to be at work. The family must have much more information on your children and and instead of you, instead of you sitting down with them to work out a better parenting program you seem to be picking quarrels with your husband's friend who must have been 
you know, speaking on behalf of his family to help you. You seem to see him as a person who does not want you to work. Now, please, um, there is need for you to, take, to have a, a new mindset on this. You need to come down to see the sense in your husband's intervention. Be humble to get more information about these children roaming the streets. Your husband friend cannot be saying this to hurt you. It's not saying it to hurt you. But rather to draw your attention to what he thinks the children need at this time. That is better parental attention. The man has right to prognose because you entrusted the care of your children in this family. Amen. Besides, opportunity still exists to sit down with your husband to consider an option for mutually acceptable daycare facility for these children. But if your greater concern is the need to work, you need to still look at it, to sit down and, uh, you know, have a discussion with your husband. You should be on the same page with your husband. As it seems to us that you take sole responsibility for the choice of where your children stay in the day. Well, what we are saying is that the decision to have the children where they are now because he used it was taken by her. She used the word, I put the children in that place. So it should have been a sole decision taken by her. The second question is short. Is traditional marriage not, yes. is traditional marriage not approved or recognized because sometimes you don't have money to perform this church marriage, which is expensive? Please tell me what should such person do Send them, send the woman out or send, the, send her away. To be a OT billet. Joe Dara, Joe Buffy, Muni to talk to Rick Bay Yakweba, Aki Low Lati, Elemino, Low Lati, she be a OT new job, Tabi, Tialari Wu. He's asking whether it is still recognized or not. Okay. Now, and I'm not asking, can I drive my wife, since I cannot afford the expensive. Uh, the expenses in the short marriage. My brother, your traditional marriage is valid and binding just as much as your church wedding. It is just that as a child of God and as Christian, it is necessary to have church blessing which is not as expensive as you have portrayed here. Please note that the scale of your church wedding is your choice. Which again can be arranged with your church. We have enough record and testimony of a number of wedding ceremonies that are humbly conducted and arranged. God bless you. Praise the Lord. We have some questions here. The first, the first question says, my fiancé and I were led by God individually to each other, and we started courtship. We submitted also to mentorship. Now, 
We both spoke to our parents, but they disagreed majorly because we are from different tribes. After some time, my own parents agreed. But his parents disagreed. His parents who earlier agreed declined after consulting with a seer. The seer told them that we are not compatible. And also described me as Alagbara. This has caused us some heartaches. And we are on the verge of going our separate ways. Or going ahead with the marriage without them. We have decided to go ahead without them. Please, I need your counsel. Praise the Lord. It is important that we have parents' blessing on our marriage. It is therefore necessary to carry them along from the inception of the courtship. Parental concept is also biblical. The scripture in Genesis 26, 33 to 35 talks about the grief of Jacob and Rebekah. When Esau married the daughters of Heath. So the, our marriage can either bring grief or joy to our parents. We should honor our parents by taking seriously what they say about our spouses. Their refusal might also give us an opportunity to establish whether God is speaking. We This will also help us to reevaluate our choice. Going ahead without their support or counsel or blessing will lay a foundation for a, an unhealthy relationship between us and our in-laws. And this will tend to haunt us for a long time in our marriage. And we will be on a war path which could have been avoided. Where there is a strong opposition from our parents. And our own convictions for one another is not strong enough. It is better to go our separate ways. However, where we are convinced that God is the one speaking and that our parents might be looking at it from the worldview 
Or may have a personal reason why they do not want to accept our partner. Tabi an wo bi wa won wo ni ha miran. Tabi won ni erogba okan won. Te ko o ni se pelu awon ti kara won ti won fe fe obo si eni ta fe fe yi. It is best to give it time. O wa sun pe ki a fi akoko si le si. While we also devote our time to prayer, fervent prayer. A o wa ya akoko wa soto fun abdura takutakun. If need be, we can consult people who we think our parents will respect their opinion. And in such a way that at the end of the day we might get their blessing. Whatever decisions we decide to take, we must carry them alone. Even if it means just obtaining their permissive will. That is if we, ha- we know we have a strong conviction. That God is the one leading us. Praise the Lord. The second question says, my wife does not know how to cook. If I complain, she will pick a fight with me. What shall I do? Secondly, if I wake her up in the night to pray, sometimes she will not answer. And when she answers, she will later lie down on the bed and sleep off. What do I do? Praise the Lord. The woman is the homekeeper. As written in Proverbs 14 Also Proverbs 31, 14 and 15 talk about the virtuous woman that prepares food for her family. Every woman needs to know how to cook. To keep her husband from deriving pleasure in outside I said that food. Sometimes the problem might not even be the inability to cook. Or lack of knowledge of what our partner really wants. Some women will rather prefer to eat out than even cook. Some women would rather prefer to eat out than even cook. However, it is important that every woman should know how to cook. Proverbs 14, 15 However, for the case of the man complaining about your wife not knowing how to cook, will not bring about the desired results. Your wife needs your help, needs your understanding, and needs your encouragement. Not only from the point of being a husband, but as a friend, because you are in need together. You should encourage your wife, where you know how to cook, Teach her how to cook. Where you are unable to teach her how to cook. Get her to enroll in catering schools. She can also buy cookery books. And try her hands on different recipes. And she can also consult friends. Even people in the market will teach you how to cook. When you go to the market and you see some of these uh, leaves and everything, ask the women, how do you cook this? 
ti e ba lo si oja bo ye fe lo ro e we be tabi awon won ti o fin se obe e le bere lowo awon to nta oja yi pe ba wo ni a se nse awon yi we yi they teach you they give you the items they itemize how to cook and everything won ma ko yin wa susun awon eroja ti e ni lo lati fi si awon o nje yi to fi de o nje fe pe o je aladun and sometimes when you try them they they come out very delicious e gba mi ran ti e ba se wa gbiyan ju re e o ri wi pe e o ma fun la ni Praise the Lord. And you will go. The second question talks about praying in the night. I think this area needs some understanding. Because it depends on individual schedule. If a woman goes to work in the morning and has to spend about three hours after work in traffic to get home, ti obirin ba ni lo lati lo si bi se ni oburan to ma lo bi wakati meta ninu sukere fa kere ko to de ile and she gets home very late o wa de asale ko to de le prepares food for the uh, family ti o ti to nje fun oko atebi and the next day she's going to go back to work again at about 6 am in the morning ni oburan jo keje bi agogo me fo oburan won tu ma pada lo si bi se yi that one is not going to be very effective in night vigil o bin ri be ko le mu na do ko ni pa sise iso oru so both of you have to agree on what is best for two of you and you meje je ni lati fi mo so kan lati wa apoko yi te ko sun of fun yi mejeji and even if if you must pray in the night so ba wa pon do do pe ke gba do ni asale it shouldn't be extended hours e o gba do je ko pe ju tabi ke fa gun it shouldn't be 12 to 3 am be agogo meji la o bi se agogo meta agogo meta owuro if there is understanding okay we will be having vigils we we'll just have 30 minutes every night and it doesn't even have to be every day ti o ye ba wa e le so ife fun bi ogbon iseju o le ma ma se iso ori pa pa ju lo o le ma jojo ju mo le ma ma se One hour maximum for a night vigil can be very effective. Can even be more effective than four hours in the night. Wakati kwa isho ruole muna doko juu wakati mare ni nisho rulo. So the issue of vigil shouldn't be a problem. Or isho ru kuko do dia onti ofa wa hala. If there is understanding. Si oyeba wa hala re imeteji. In fact, both questions, the cooking, the the vigil. Shouldn't be a problem in the home as long as there is love and there is understanding. Koda ishoro mejeji e to ni se pelu o nje sise ati sise ishoro ni won igba ti fe ba wa ninu ebi o ye ki o fa wahala. So we encourage you our brother ara pe riwa an gba yin yanju to show more love and understanding towards your wife ati o ye si han fun aya yin and if you think that she's just plain lazy se ba wa ri wi pe won kan wuwa o imole ni then you have to make her a prayer point and in life you are my god you are one and god will help you both in jesus name oluwa yo sirin mi jeje lowo ni oruko jesu praise the lord and you know allo go with your own mouth how line you are begin to bless your family address me sure story dile wa bless your children sure fun awon mo re bless your marriage gbadura story pe yawo re bless them in the name of the lord sure fun won ni oruko luwa speak good things so oro rere every day is god's day bo gbo ojo ni ti olorun but the day that you open your mouth to cry to the heavenly is your day it says in the day that i cried out then shall my enemies turn back this i know for god is with me in the day that i cry that is your day if you close your mouth this morning you cheat your destiny say this loud and clear the any power that wants to turn me to a beggar you better open your mouth and shout it again say it with holy anger Joe Elia Okurani Joe Elia Okurani Joe Elia Eh se lo je Kata Kata 
In the name of Jesus. Command them to scatter. Any power that wants to turn me to a beggar. You are a liar. Masika Tanda Ripon to Shitayama. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This next prayer point is for 57 persons. The angel of the Lord wants to walk with this prayer in the life of 57 persons. That was the figure that I saw. Say this loud and clear. I shall not wear the garment of rejection. Can you shout it loud and clear again? I didn't hear your voice at all. You will now say, Garment of rejection. Catch fire. In the name of Jesus. I shall not wear the garment of rejection. Garment of rejection. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We pray this prayer on Wednesday. The Holy Ghost wanted us to pray it again. Say any power. Using my parents to punish me. You can put anything there. Either your children, your ministry, your career, your work, any power using them to punish you. It is the power using them that you are attacking. Any power using my parents to punish me. Your time is up. Down in the name of Jesus. Rasike tarika poto poto shiha, lika taraba poto sotu yama. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Did you want prayer before you sit down? If you love your destiny and you want God to meet you at the point of your need, you want God to touch you first before He touches others. The remaining three prayers, don't joke with them. Say this with holy anger. Troublers of my peace. Your assignments are over. I didn't hear your voice at all. Let your voice roar like thunder. That man shout it loud. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Troubles of my peace. Your assignments are over. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You need aggression. 
need anger. need violence. To pray this one. Prison door. And that is holding down my success. Prison door. That is holding down my success. Scatter. In the name of Jesus. Command the prison door to scatter. Last right. Oh yes. Mashike tanda ribo to sutula. In Jesus mighty name we pray. The last one before you sit down. The last one before you sit the most dangerous battle that any man could get involved in is what is known as the night battle. The night battle. If you can destroy the night battle, if you can overcome the night battle, your day will flourish. Your day will flourish. Many defeats that many are experiencing in the day actually started in the night. Say this loud and clear. Night battles. That is increasing my suffering. God is going to use this prayer for so many people here today. Night battles. That is increasing my suffering. In the name of Jesus, command the night battles to die. Oh yes. Oh yes. Jesus mighty name we pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your loving kindness. In your presence is the fullness of joy. We thank you because you are an amist. Your power is here. Your anointing is here. Your glory is present. To destroy. To break down, to uproot, and to move our life forward. Father, I am praying today that everyone hearing the sound of my voice, whatever power that has pursued you to this place today shall be disgraced in the name of Jesus. Today's service will mark the beginning of an unending laughter in your life. Thank you, Heavenly Father.
in Jesus mighty name we pray please have a seat let's take our Bibles please I am looking at what I call prophetic sword against strangers prophetic sword against strangers it is good to know that the best book to define any subject that has to do with God with man and with Satan is the Bible not the dictionary. Any subject that has to do with God, with man, with Satan, the best book to consult, to look at it, to define it correctly, is the Bible, not the dictionary. Why? Why is that so? It is because the Bible is the only word that is settled forever. It says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That word is settled in heaven. Which means the foundation, the root of the word is in heaven. That is, you cannot improve on the word. You cannot change the word. You cannot change it to suit your fleshly thing. It is settled forever. So when we talk about strangers, the best book to define who a stranger is, is the Bible. Man's definition of a stranger is different from God's definition of who a stranger is. And the best definition can only come from the scripture. The following scripture will open your understanding about the agenda, the operations, and the activities of strangers. Hosea chapter 7. Hosea chapter 7. Hosea, Urikeji. I read verses 8 and 9. What can I say? Hosea 7. Hosea 7. Hosea 7. Hosea 7. Hosea 7. Hosea 7. The first information about stranger. Hosea 7, 8 and 9. It says, Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. And because of that, verse 9, strangers have devoured his strength and he knoweth it not. Great years are here and there upon him. Yet he knoweth not. His strength has been devoured. So he has become old. The first information about strangers is that strangers are devourers of strength. 
Strangers are devourers of strength. And what is the strength of a child of God? Joy. Nehemiah 8.10 He says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. In other words, strangers are devourers of joy. When joy is devoured by strangers, then the person cannot face the enemy. So where there is no joy, there is no strength. And where there is no strength, there is no victory. Because the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, then something is wrong with your strength. See, you have a small strength. But who is eating up the strength? Strangers. So, if joy is absent in your life, it is the activity, the operation of strangers. So the stranger that is devouring your strength is technically making you a victim of adversity. Joy is different from happiness. Happiness is what you get naturally. What you see, what you feel will give you happiness. Money can give you happiness. Beauty can give you happiness. Promotion can give you happiness. But not joy. Joy is deeper than happiness. And the strangers, they are after your joy. They have devoured the strength of Ephraim. So I speak powerfully into your life now. That the stranger that is devouring your strength. The stranger that is devouring your joy. Shall die in the name of Jesus. And if you are in this service this morning. And you know that your joy has been stolen. As you say this one powerful amen. Your stolen Joy is restored now. Another information about stranger in Psalm 54. Psalm 54. Verse 3. Psalm 54. Psalm 54. Verse 3. For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. Strangers are oppressors. Strangers are oppressors. They have risen up against me. They have oppressed me. They oppressed my soul. They seek after my soul. They oppress me. Strangers are oppressors. They carry out oppression that is beyond human explanation. And what does oppression do to a man? According to the Bible, it makes it a wise man. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. He says, surely oppression make it a wise man mad. That is, a man under serious oppression would behave like a person that has lost his senses. He will not be able to think Correctly. 
His thinking will be upside down. He will enter into some things that you will say, ah ah, but why did you allow this to happen? Why? Because it's under serious oppression. I told you the story of that woman. Highly educated. She went to this so called man of God. And man of God said, When you are coming in the evening, because this problem that you just mentioned now is too much, it can only be tackled in the night vision. So when you are coming, come with two items. Come with an egg and a bottle of oil. The woman thought that, well, maybe there are other people coming for night vigil too. But when she got there, it was the so-called man of God alone that she met. I said, where are other people? I said, no, it is me and you that you are going to do the night vigil. She didn't like it. But where? She wants a problem to be solved. Did you bring the two items? So here I did. The prophet collected it. Took the egg to rub it all over her body from the head to the toe and cracked the thing open. And some substance came out of the, the egg. Say, so can you see now that all these things came out from your body? So with that, the woman relaxed. That my problem is going to be solved here today. So now the oil, I'm going to anoint your head. The woman agreed. The man of God anointed the head. He was very quick about that. So now I'm going to anoint your chest, your breast area. Remove your clothes. The woman didn't like it. Highly educated woman, a lecturer. The prophet anointed the chest area. He didn't rush. He took his time. Say so now, Bye. I'm going to anoint your private part. The woman said, what? Do you want your problem to continue? She said, no. Remove your pants. The prophet anointed a private part. And I said, wow. The anointing all must enter. I'm sure you know what happened later. What pushed her to that? Oppression. Oppression make it a wise man mad. Strangers are behind all oppression of the devil. Any power that is oppressing your destiny shall die in the name of Jesus. Yes. Strangers are oppressors. Oppression is like somebody putting a cow or a heavy load on a person's head. Something so heavy being placed on the person's head. 
the person definitely will be very uncomfortable. He will not be able to stand, he will not be able to run, he will not be able to do anything. Because something is pressing him down. Oppression maketh a wise man mad. Any evil load that is pressing your destiny down, I command that evil load to catch fire. If you want to know the power of oppression, and how strangers use it a lot. Look at John the Baptist. Jesus was talking about John the Baptist. He said, Among those that are born of a woman, there is none greater than John the Baptist. Which means John the Baptist is greater than Moses. The man who saw God face to face. John the Baptist is greater than Moses. Greater than David. Greater than Elisha. The man with the double portion. Greater than Elijah. Put all the prophets together. They are coming behind John the Baptist. It was this John the Baptist that one day saw Jesus coming. Nobody knew him. But by revelation, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. It was this John the Baptist that said, Well, the one that is coming after me, I am not worthy to unloose the latchet of his shoe. But when oppression hit John the Baptist, when they put him inside the prison, he sent a message to Jesus. Saying, Are you who is to come? Or shall we start looking for another? A spiritual man. John the Baptist became a carnival. Oppression make it a wise man mad. A man under heavy anointing. Became a man that is speaking rubbish. Because of oppression. He lost his revelation of power. He lost his spiritual senses. He became a man that is out of touch with spiritual reality. Why? Because of pressure, make it a wise man. And eventually, it was strangers that killed John the Baptist. Somebody was dancing in the palace. And the king said, what do you want? So, I want the head of John the Baptist from the prison to death sentence. Stranger. First of all, oppressed him. He lost his spiritual senses. And eventually, the stranger killed him. If they can do that to John the Baptist, the man whom Jesus says there is none greater than him, then you will know that oppression has power. I decree it to your life again. Anyone that is under serious hurt, dangerous oppression of the strangers, Right there where you are. Receive your freedom in the name of Jesus. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. In the name of Jesus. Another information. About strangers. Look at it in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. 
Isaiah 25. 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 Isai
We are going inside. Don't talk. Let's go. And they enter this rock. It was like a different environment. A very big place. And the brother said, he saw different people, some looking like human beings, some looking like animals. Then you said, keep quiet. So when it's time to strike, I will tell you. So the angel gave the brother a whip. Said so they, said they will start calling names now. The names that will be slaughtered. So when they get to your name, start flogging them. And they start calling names. Start calling names. Any mouth in the palace of the stranger that is calling your name or the name of your children, the name of your wife or your husband, they shall catch fire. They started calling him. Then they now got to the turn of the brother. They called his name. Immediately they called his name. The angel said, Strike! He began to whip them. They could not see the angel. They could not see the brother. They could not see the whip. But they are feeling it. And they began to scream. They began to scream. The brothers scatter that meeting. The whip that will scatter strangers in their palace. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The palace of strangers. It's like the court of Pharaoh in Egypt. Where magic. Sustress. Witchcraft. Are openly displayed. The palace of the strangers. Is where charms, amulets, rituals are practiced. It is a place where satanic prophecies are released. Where consultation takes place. It is an arena where black serpents and dark speeches operate unhindered. God said the palace of the strangers will not become a city. For it not to become a city, you will have to cry against it. Just like they cry against Babylon. Say, Babylon, Babylon is falling. It's become the habitation of devils. The hold of every foul spirit. The cage of every unclean bird. It's a cry against it. When you cry against the palace of the stranger, it falls. Therefore, any palace of the stranger that is assigned against you, I cry against it now. Fall in the name of Jesus. Prophetic sword against strangers. Now, look at this popular scripture. In Psalm 18, Psalm 18, verse 
Psalm 18, verse 44. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The stranger shall fade away and be afraid out of their closed place. Another information about strangers. From that passage, you will discover that strangers know themselves. They know who they are. You may not know who you are, but strangers, they know who they are. So when you start to address them, they know that you are talking to them. Strangers are not deaf. They have ears. So they are not deaf, they are not dumb spirits. Then strangers have detailed information about you. That as soon as they hear of me, there is something they are hearing about you. Whatever they are hearing about you is determined by your relationship between God and Satan. They are hearing something about you. How you relate with God and how you relate with Satan. Then strangers know who they should submit to. Said, as soon as they hear of me, they shall submit themselves unto me. They know who they should submit to. Not everybody can exercise authority over strangers. The fact that you call the name of Jesus does not mean that strangers will submit to you. The name of Jesus is powerful. There is no doubt about it. But the, but the person that is calling that name must be known by Jesus himself. The question is, do you know Jesus? Does Jesus know you? Can Jesus boast about you? Do you have a personal relationship with that Jesus? Because Jesus himself said, I know my sheep. And my sheep knows me. They hear my voice. And they will not follow the voice of strangers. Strangers know who to submit to. So if you are here in this service today and you have not given your life to Jesus, as far as ever is concerned, you are a stranger. You must come into the kingdom of light. When it is time for you to give your life to Jesus, do so very quickly. Then he says, strangers can be scared. They can be scared. You can terrify them. You can make them to be so afraid of you to the extent that they will avoid you. There are people that witches and wizards, they fear. They are afraid of them. They don't want to move close to them. They are the one that can exercise authority over strangers. And one surest way to scare the strangers is to become too hot in the spirit. Not that you carry fire. You yourself, you are fire. Not that you carry fire. But you yourself, you are fire. Your eyes is fire. Your tongue fire. Your bone is fire. Everything inside you is fire. That is how you can scare the strangers. 
But the truth is this. Many of us, we are not hot in the spirit. We play gentility. Many are spiritually cool. We shout, we scream, we pray, we confess to your but we are not hot. No fire. No power. But there is somebody here today. Before you leave this place, fresh fire will enter into your bones. I said, fresh fire will enter into your bones. Then he now says, strangers, they run out of their close places. Which means strangers love to hide in close places. Why are they hiding? So that you won't know that they are there. They hide to operate secretly and silently. They, they hide to to divert your attention away from them. They hide so that they can attack you suddenly when you are at ease. The Bible says they hide in close places. What are close places? They are secret things. What are close places? They are the unconfessed sin. It covers strangers. They hide there. What are, what are close places? They are generational curses that have not been broken. They are the evil thoughts and evil imaginations. Those are close places. They hide there. Close places. They are incisions on our body. They are unbroken evil covenant and spares. Those are close places. They hide there. They are the abominable materials in our houses. You say you are a Christian. But inside your house, you have the six and seven book of Moses. You have Ludo game in your house. You have snake and ladder game in your house. Close places. You have stolen items in your house. They are close places. You have pictures of your former boyfriend and former girlfriend. In your house, you have those magical books. In your house, you, you have those demonic jewelries that looks like that looks like dangerous animals. You hide them under your bed. They are close places. You have that large garment that you inherited from your great great grandfather. They are abominable materials. Anything in your possession that glorifies the devil is close places. Who are the strangers? They are the fallen spirits. They are the fallen angels. They are demons seeking to inhabit the body of man. Strangers are the powers who are not supposed to be part of your destiny journey. But they have gained entrance into your destiny. Strangers are the wicked that are very close to you. The wicked that are very 
close to him. They have a wicked heart. They are planning wicked things for you. And yet they are close to you. Strangers are the ancestral spirits roaming about in your family line. They are the false brethren. They are the night visitors that appear in your house or in your dream. They are strangers. A man and a woman came for prayers. Say, we are looking for the foot of the womb. And as we began to pray, the Lord said, These two people, any time they want to touch each other, somebody always come into their room to watch the action. And as long as that person keeps on coming, the pregnancy will not stay. So I told them, it was very strange. I told them, you think that you are only two in the room? You are more than two. Somebody always come to visit. To watch. You are going to pray this prayer. When you get to, and you want to touch each other, pray this prayer. That any eyes that is watching us should receive the slap of the angel. The prayer does not make sense. Say, how can somebody be watching us? After a few weeks, they came back with the testimony. They said, ah, man of God, this is what happened. See, me and my wife, we pray that prayer. We are not really expecting much. See, but all of a sudden, we could not see anything, new, but we had something. It's like this, the thing is falling off. Hitting something. Falling off, rising up. And then we have scream. By the, by the third day, the friend of that sister was blind. They led her to the house to their house. And she told them the reason why she became blind was that any time her friend and the husband wants to meet, she will project herself into their room and just be watching them. I'm praying for somebody here today. Any power that is coming into your house without your knowledge, they shall receive the slap of the angels. Strangers, they are human beings who have entered into blood covenant with Satan. They are the high-ranking spirit in the kingdom of Satan who are claiming ownership of your life. They will say that you belong to them. You belong to them. You are their children. You are their husband. You are their wife. High ranking spirits in the kingdom of Satan who are claiming ownership of your life. Strangers are the spirits that entered into you when you are having sex with a person that you are not married to. Sexual intercourse with someone that you are not married to. 
It's not fun. It's destruction. Something will enter into you. We call them strangers. You never remain the same again. Strangers are the evil spirits that get entrance into your body system through food. They entered into your body system. Immediately, Judas ate the food. The Bible says, and Satan entered into him. Any stranger that have gained entrance into your body system through food, I order them out in the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. Let your amen roar like thunder. How do you deal with a stranger? You deal with strangers. The way prophet Elijah dealt with the prophet of Baal. He said, arrest all of them. Let no one escape. And then he slew all of them. Your own prophetic sword shall slaughter all strangers in the name of Jesus. Our own prophetic sword under the new covenant is prayer and the word of God. Prayer and the word of God. The apostles, they said, we shall give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word of God. So when you use these two powerful swords against strangers, you slaughter them. Your prayers today will locate strangers in their close places. Bow down your head. Lay your right hand on your chest. Now, with your own mouth, silently, that any stranger that is at the root of my affliction, strangers at the root of my life, strangers at the root of anywhere I'm living, let the sword of fire cut them to pieces. Speak to the Lord quietly now. And if you are in this service today, and you are not born again, you have not given your life to Jesus publicly, you will need to rise up and come to the front. Don't, don't be ashamed. You have to give your life publicly to the Lord. Jesus is waiting for you here. Come forward. Wherever you are, just come forward. Either you are a boy or you are a girl, you are a man or a woman, come forward. Wherever you are, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Come forward. And come and give your life to Him. So that you two don't become strangers. Anyone that has son has life. Anyone that does not have son does not have life. Come forward. And give your life to Him. We are waiting for you. Anywhere you are, come forward. The gallery, anywhere. Don't be ashamed. As you come, the Lord will receive you. As you come, your name will be written in the book of life. This is very important to heaven.
Don't let the devil pin you down there. Don't let the enemy pin you down there. The Lord is waiting for you here in the front. The Lord is waiting for you here in the front. Surrender completely to Him. Yes. There are people coming from the back, coming from the back, coming from the gallery. There is joy in heaven over a sinner that comes back to the Lord. Heaven is clapping, heaven is rejoicing over you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is waiting for you. Don't listen to the devil. Don't let him pin you down there. Don't let shame catch you. Be bold. Come and give your life to him. He died for you. He died for you. That is why he has brought you here. To save your soul. To save your soul. Don't be a stranger to heaven. Come back home. Come back home. Come back home. Come back home. He's calling you. He's calling you. Come back home. Come back home. Those of us who are standing here at the front, heaven is rejoicing over you now. The angels are dancing, they are clapping, they are jumping. Because there is joy in heaven over a sinner that repents. I would like you to bow down your heads and say these short prayers after me. Say it with your own mouth. Let, let God, let the devil hear you. Say, Lord Jesus. I come before you today. I know that I am a sinner. And I needed a savior. I cry unto you today. Jesus, Son of God, save my soul. I surrender my life to you totally. Write my name in the book of life. I will forever follow you. I reject Satan. I reject sin. Thank you for accepting me. Amen. I'm going to pray this prayer for you now. Father, I pray for this one that you have brought into the kingdom. It is your hand that brought them. Let the same hand keep them in the name of Jesus. The glory of the Most High God will keep you. The blood of Jesus Christ will keep you. In the name of Jesus, you will not go back into the world. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Please open your eyes.
we have our counselors and ministers. Look at somebody holding a plank there. Please follow that person. Follow that person. They will give you more information. The Lord bless you as you do so. Shall we all rise up, please? Lay your right hand on your own head. Everybody rise up and lay your right hand on your head. You better face your own business. Close your eyes. Face your business. Your right hand on your head. Can you say this with a shout? Oppression of the devil. I didn't hear your voice at all. I didn't hear your voice at all. You can say it louder than that. Get out of my life. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Remove your hand from your head. These three prayers want to deal with a stranger. And please, no mercy. Shout this loud and clear. Strangers! Monitoring my life. Receive madness. If you pray it, you get benefit. If you close your mouth, you lose out. Strangers! Monitor in my life. Receive madness. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray if your prophetic sword did not locate your own personal stranger the only person to blame is yourself Elijah cried out Arrest all the prophets of Baal. Let no one escape. And then he slaughtered your own prophetic soul to slaughter strangers. Is your prayer and the word of God. You have heard the word. It is time to put that prayer into action. This second prayer, don't joke with it. Pray with holy anger. And you will see the results. Shout this loud and clear. Strangers! Living in my house. 
Expose them. Strangers living in my house. Fire! Expose them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is the last one. Now. Bye. We want the manifestation of this third prayer within 24 hours. Within 24 hours. And if you believe God with me, it shall be so. Then you with holy anger and with the voice of the archangel shout this loud and clear. Every good thing in the hands of strangers Release them unto me in the name of Jesus. Every good thing in the hands of strangers, release them unto me. Release them unto me. Release them unto me. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Within 24 hours, the God that changed the destiny and the life of Joseph, the man who slept in the prison last night. And before the night fall, he has been decorated in a palace. That same God will answer this your thought prayer. Within 24 hours, Strangers shall be exposed. I said within 24 hours. No matter where they are, no matter where they are hiding, they shall be exposed. Close your eyes and stretch forth your two hands. Stretch forth your two hands now. Let your amen be strong, powerful, and dynamic. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare for you this week a week of victory. A week of signs and wonders. A week of prosperity. A week of fire. A week of power. In the name of Jesus. Anywhere you go. Through 
throughout this week. Before you get there, Jesus will be there. Before you get there, the Holy Ghost will be there. In the name of Jesus, every step that we take throughout this week will lead you into abundance. In the name of Jesus, no sickness for you. No tragedy for you. No accident for you. No disaster for you. No sudden death for you. In the name of Jesus. The eyes that will behold you for evil. This week shall be blinded. Anyone that will use charm against you. This week, that charm will backfire. It is well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, all the days of our lives, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Seven powerful hallelujah. Let's go.